The most basic question, are you excited for the upcoming NFL season? That's next on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day, free and available wherever you get your podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. My name is Travis Rogers. Click that subscribe button both on your podcast feed and on your Locked on Rams YouTube channel. If you're saying to yourself, there's a Locked on Rams YouTube channel, yes, there is. You should go check it out, and yes, you should subscribe to that. Not only am I the host of Locked on Rams, but I am also the host of of your Rams pre-half and post-game show on their flagship station, 710 ESPN. we got a good one for you today. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. I want to talk about how the Warriors and Rams might be connected because, believe it or not, I think there is a little bit of a connection right there that's coming up in a bit. And how do you get better in, in for the regular season? By going at somebody as good as you are in practice every single day. That's straight ahead. But let's start right here. I was coming home. I was, I was on the road this weekend. I was in uh, lovely Fresno, California. And uh, I was there for a baseball tournament for my son. And we were coming back, and we were just, you know, a long drive back from Fresno back to, to L.A., and we were talking about a, a million different things. And he just kind of asked me, you know, innocuously, innocently, just, hey, Dad, are you, are you excited for the, the, the Rams season coming up? And when he asked me, I, I just, it's, well, yeah, of, of course. And we started talking about it. We started thinking about it. And I, 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 I didn't realize how excited I am for it until he asked me that question. I mean, I obviously love watching the Dodgers. I like watching the Lakers. And the Rams are something that not only do I enjoy personally, but that I work with professionally when my job is uh, their, their pre-half and post-game sh- uh, show host with my buddy Kirk Morrison. Um but when he asked me that, all the pieces kind of started to click together. It is not only um, exciting because it's the beginning of a new season, which is exciting for all 32 teams in the league, I would imagine. Um, but it's particularly exciting for the Rams this season. It's particularly exciting for the Rams this season because they're the only ones coming in as the defending champs. They're the ones that are looking to go back to back, something that hasn't happened in the NFL for 20 years. They have the prime time game to kick off the season at SoFi Stadium against another very, very good team, another team with Super Bowl aspirations in the Buffalo Bills. And that's 79 days from now. We're, we're under three months away from the start of the NFL season. That is just fantastic news because once it starts, we all know, goes by like that, right? The, the NFL season goes by faster than anything else. The baseball season is all about a long, deliberate six-month run where none, no game really means a whole lot and no game really means nothing, but it's just this, what have you played like for a week? What have you played like for a month? What have you played like for the first half of the season, the second half of the season? You kind of go through the whole thing, and then you take this big six-month picture and kind of figure out where you are. The NBA is similar, a little bit shorter timeline, obviously, but similar. The NFL is totally to every game takes on massive significance. Every game takes on just so much importance because you, you, there are only 17 of them. There are only 17 chances to go show what you are. And the difference between making the playoffs sometime is one game. So when the Rams hit the field on opening night against the Buffalo Bills 79 days from now, it's a big deal. It's a very big deal. Win that game, and you're talking about, hey, look, and obviously you got a lot of time to go, but you just beat a very good team. You just beat, uh, you opened up your your title defense with a win against a very good team. If you lose that game, we're talking about the same kind of stuff. Well, I mean, that's one of the teams you might have to beat in the in the Super Bowl. That's you know, that's kind of a benchmark as to where you are against the other better teams in the league. That, that's that's more important than beating the, uh, the Seattle Mayors, Seattle Seahawks, for instance. Um, you know, it it just takes on so much added uh, its significance early in the season. Um, the other parts that are just so incredibly exciting when you start to think about it is how do they wear the mantle of champs? You know, that we nobody knows. 
Sean McVay has never been the defending Super Bowl champ. Nobody on the Rams has a Super Bowl resume as the defending champ. Like, you know how Tom Brady was going to respond to it. You know how Rob Gronkowski was going to respond to it, whether it was, you know, Joe Montana or even Patrick Mahomes. We have we have some data on these guys that come back and, and go again, and how do they respond? Now, we've seen the Rams in the Super Bowl and, and not cut it done and come back, and we saw what that looks like. But I'm incredibly excited to see – do they just run it back? Do they do a lot of what they did last year? Do they throw a new wrinkle in there? Do they try to do some things a little bit differently? Does Sean McVay mix it up a little bit? Does he get more creative? Does he get more concerned? There's so many different parts about this that when you are the defending champ, I think they get very, very interesting. Another part of it that has me just jacked is what is Matthew Stafford going to look like in year two of this offense? Because think about this. Matthew Stafford is obviously a high-level NFL quarterback. He proved that last year. The Rams, I've said it on this podcast a hundred times. Without Matthew Stafford, they do not win the Super Bowl. The period, sentence, paragraph, truth, right? Cooper Cup is your MVP. Aaron Donald had a very good job, a uh, very good case to be made for why he should have been MVP. But they don't win in Tampa without Matthew Stafford. They don't win against San Francisco without Matthew Stafford. And they don't beat the Cincinnati Bengals in the playoffs without Matthew Stafford. That's his first year in the offense. I know he's not green in the sense he's been around the league a long time. But first year with his receiving core, first year with that head coach. Now, all of a sudden, you've got a new offensive uh, coordinator and Liam Cohen. You've got some, some variables that are in there right now. But I can't imagine that he's not a better quarterback this upcoming season than he was last year. And I'm not talking about statistically. That, that, that really isn't as meaningful to me as some other things are. What does he look like? Does he does he more, look more comfortable? Is he more in command of what's going on? And if the answers to those questions are yes, what does that mean for everybody? Because he looked pretty darn comfortable last year. He looked pretty at ease in running that offense. He can have that conversation, that very high-level uh, com conversation that only quarterbacks like him and Sean McVay can have. With all due respect to Jared Goff, they weren't having those, you know, graduate-level conversations about playing quarterback in the NFL. They just They just weren't. Matthew Stafford is. How much better could he be? How much better will the city be? Right? In fact, why don't we do that? Why don't we come back and talk about what this title defense may be for the city of Los Angeles, for Rams fans in general, and what that might mean for the rest of the league? That's coming up next. But first, let's talk about our pals at betonline.net, your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. You can find all the latest sports development, league reviews and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and, of course, Major League Baseball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports, scores, podcast news this season. It's the fastest and easy way to check all of your favorite events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Did you get down on Matthew Fitzpatrick in the golf before this went down? Not a bad bet. He'd won at Brookline before. And just, just saying, you might have made a little money on that one if you were paying attention. Head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. The Ultimate NBA Mock Draft has already started, and with over 50 insiders, nothing equals the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft. The Locked On NBA Big Board Draft Experts plus the Odyssey Insiders. First pick, June 16th. Search Ultimate NBA Mock Draft and follow now so you do not miss a pick. Okay, so I think one of the biggest... Biggest might be the wrong word. One of the more interesting things uh, that I'm looking forward to with this upcoming season for the Rams, and we're under three months away from the start of the season. Again, it's 79 days until they play the Buffalo Bills on that Thursday night to kick off the 2022 season. Just 54 days until they play the Chargers in their first exhibition game of the season. And again, the Rams use the exhibition season a little differently, so it's not like you're going to see all their guys. But they'll have the uniforms on. They'll be running around. Guys will be hitting each other. So at least it's a, a little bit of a morsel of football before we get to the, uh, the main course. But let's go back to this. I think one of the more interesting things that's going to take place is what will this team feel like for people in this city? I'll, I'll use this again as an example. When I was on the road uh, out, of, out of town this weekend, I was in Fresno for a baseball tournament and talking with a bunch of the dads, and some of them know what I do and some of them don't. Um, we The conversation turned towards the Rams a lot. We're at a baseball stadium. During the middle of baseball season, the NBA Finals had just wrapped up. Conversation was the Rams. 
And the conversation is, can they repeat? The conversation is, are you going to games? The conversation is, do you like what they did? What about Robert Woods leaving? What about Allen Robinson coming in? How much will they meet uh, miss Andrew Whitworth? You know, what about the new Logan Bruss? The guy is he going to start at guard? And can Anthony, uh, uh, I should say, uh, Aaron Donald, can he put together another season like he's done through the first eight or nine years of his career? It was it was a Rams conversation over and over and over again. It was really interesting, and and I think it speaks to their place in this city all of a sudden that. Look, there were two topics, three, okay? There were three topics last season that were kind of the the, the phases of the Rams season last year. And the first topic through the first, call it eight or 10, 12 weeks of the season was, was the Matthew Stafford deal the right decision? Was giving up a couple of first round picks to go get a quarterback who had not had a ton of success in the postseason the right thing to do to put you over the top to give you a chance to win the Super Bowl? And then towards the back end of the season, I think that had been very clear that it was true. That was kind of phase one. Phase two was, and this is the part that uh, I think will be a little bit different this year. What the hell happened in that San Francisco game in the last game of the season? And I'm not talking about the Rams not winning the game. I'm not talking about Sean McVay's decision to punt the ball away or any of these. I'm talking about uh, SoFi Stadium was, look, we said at the time maybe 50-50, probably wasn't. Maybe 60-40 is maybe a little generous towards the Rams. It was at least, let's put it this way, it was at least 60% San Francisco 49ers fans. And that's coming from somebody that uh, is a Rams fan. That's coming from somebody that's covered the Rams since they've come back to Los Angeles. It was hard to see. You've got this beautiful new stadium, and it's the first time that people have really been allowed inside it in any meaningful way. And you've got 60% of the place is wearing 49 or red. It was embarrassing. Now, they made it better, and by the time we got to the NFC Championship game, it was more like 50-50. But I think what's really interesting about this upcoming season is what will it look like Moving forward, when the 40, now they play the 49ers earlier this year, so maybe a little bit less, you know, juice as far as, you know, out 49ers had to win that game at the end of the season. That was a very important game for them, obviously, but it's still LA. It's still San Francisco. There's always going to be a rivalry, but I think with the Super Bowl championship and call it bandwagon, call it Johnny come late leaves, whatever you want. The fact of the matter is people like a winner. What will it look like? Hey, this is completely anecdotal, but it feels like you're seeing more license plate frames, flags, T-shirts, hats, all of those things that kind of give you, I mean, go anywhere in the city. You're going to see a Kobe Bryant jersey, right? You're going to see a Kobe Bryant T-shirt. Go anywhere in the city. You're going to see a Dodger cap, a Dodger T-shirt. They're everywhere. SC, right? They're, you, you can't turn around and not see those things. They're ubiquitous. The Rams are getting to that level. They're not there yet. They're not there with those other three teams that I just mentioned, but it is significantly different. And I think that's a really interesting part about what's coming up this season for them. The, the enthusiasm for this team, because here, here's how you we, we talked about it as it was happening. The way you get fans is be really good. Check. The way you be, get fans is have a really cool place to come watch games. Check. The way you win fans is have superstars. Well, triple check, right? They got nothing but stars. And then the ultimate way you do it is you go and you win a Super Bowl, which they did. So they've checked every box, but you could juice that thing through the roof if you go and win again. Or, and look, you know, knocking on wood now, maybe not even win, but get close, be in the mix, go to the NFC Championship game, go back to the Super Bowl. And like we said, if you win it again, it's just like, it's turbocharging the whole thing. And, and, and I think they could really jump into that category if, in fact, they can make another run like that. I don't know if it takes them all the way to the Laker-Dodger thing. I think that the, the only thing that does that is time and being consistently good over time. But I can't wait to see what it looks like when they play the San Francisco 49ers what it looks like when they play some of these other teams that have very loyal fan bases that are coming into SoFi Stadium, and you just know that they're going to bring their fans with them. I mean, you start to look at it. you got San Francisco coming up on October 3rd. Like I mentioned, they play them very early. Uh, the Saints fans come out. The Kansas City Chiefs fans come out like crazy. The Packer fans come out like crazy. So you're going to get a chance to see all of these teams in SoFi Stadium and what their fan bases look like, and I can't wait to see – how L.A. responds. I get it. And I said it at the time, and it still makes a ton of sense to me. The amount of money that people spend on tickets is so high. And if you're saying, look, I can finance the vast majority of my season ticket buy if I sell off my Packer tickets or my 49er. I, I, I get it. Doesn't make for a great environment for you know the football team and everything else. 
But I get it. If you're paying these figures and you're saying, like, I can pay for, I can go to seven games, I can sell the ones to the eighth and pay for the other. Makes sense to me. Yeah, I, I don't love it because I'd like to see nothing but Rams fans in there, but I get it. I wonder if that still takes place this year. I think that's a very, very interesting thing uh, for the Rams and, and a unique thing for the Rams that they have right now uh, going in to this upcoming season. And then, of course, the last thing that I'm really excited for, shouldn't say the last, another thing that I'm really excited for, can Aaron Donald do it all over again? And, and, and I'd be shocked if he didn't. Now, there's could he be an A triple plus or does he fall off to an A double plus? I mean, these are the things that you talk about with Aaron Donald. But the bottom line is I cannot wait for the start of the NFL season for all of these reasons and many, many more. So you see Steph Curry uh, grab his fourth championship ring. Remind you anybody along the way? That's coming up next. But first, let's talk about our friends at Blue Nile. At BlueNile.com, you can celebrate all of life's special moments from creating the custom engagement ring of her dreams to gifting a classic and timeless jewelry piece, all at prices you will not find at a traditional jeweler. So whether you're ready to pop the question, not a bad idea, or celebrating a milestone moment, find jewelry as unique as she is with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. Build the engagement ring of her dreams or celebrates life's special moments with fine jewelry. And no matter what you're looking for, Blue Nile has jewelry hand, jewelry experts on hand 24-7, which means they can hook you up. They can talk you through. They can help design something with you. With your help, you can lean on them, and you're going to find something exactly right. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Sports listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. And this podcast exclusive includes engagement. Use that code Locked On. That's code Locked On Plus. Every order is insured, it ships free, and arrives in a discreet package that will not give away the amazing surprise that's inside. Shop stress-free, find your forever piece, go to BlueNile.com today. Okay, so the Rams are Super Bowl champions, of course, and we crowned another champion in our little uh, sports universe a couple of nights ago. The Golden State Warriors picked up ring number four in their current uh, dynasty, the Steph, Clay, and Draymond, Steve Kirk, throw him in there. Iguodala, too. Why not? He's been a, a part of it as well. But four rings in, in a very short period of time, a couple of other finals appearances as well. But I thought it was interesting. And, and maybe you saw it. There was all over all over uh, the internet and Twitter and stuff, memes, if you will. I, I don't really meme very much, but you understand what I mean. Uh, Steph Curry in the middle of the game against the Celtics when he was just torching guys right he's making his threes all over the place and it looked like the the Warriors were getting ready to bury them now it didn't turn out exactly like that because the, the Celtics came back and the Warriors had to kind of dig in again but anyway Warriors ended up winning as we as we all know but there was a moment after Steph hit a big three where he's walking back to his bench there's a timeout on the floor and Steph holds up his hand and he starts pointing to his ring finger right he starts pointing to his ring finger like yep Get, get it ready. Give me another one. Here it comes. Remind you of anybody? Look familiar? Did you say, uh, I think I've seen that one before. And I love Steph. This is this is no shade at Steph at all. I, I think Steph Curry is, is arguably the most fun player of the 21st century. Just an amazing talent. Um, but that's Aaron Donald's move, right? Aaron Donald's the one that when he got the, the final play of the game and they won and he was all over Joe Burrow and the, the Rams fans are going crazy in SoFi and here comes the confetti, it's over. And he's the one rock, walking off the field, pointing his ring finger like, I got it, I got it. I thought that was awesome because obviously as a Rams person, as a Rams fan, as somebody that lives here in, in L.A., um, it felt like oddly validating, not that – the Rams championship needed validation. Not that it certainly Aaron Donald didn't need validation, but it's one of those things like there, there are iconic moments, right? There are iconic moments in sports where, where, where you know, pick your sport. You, obviously, let's stick here in L.A. for a second, right? Let's stick here when Kirk Gibson in 1988, he hits the home run off Dennis Eckersley. Game one, uh, they win the World Series. Obviously, you know, they end up beating the A's. You don't win it one to nothing, but 
It's an, you, you, all you need to do is see Kirk Gibson lunging forward and flicking that bat and putting it in the right field seats. Everybody here in town knows exactly what you mean. You talk about an iconic moment. Think a couple of different Laker moments. Of course, there's there's um, Magic Johnson's little baby skyhook against the Celtics, which sent them to a championship. It just you you remember it right away. And I think that basketball fans across the country remember it like that. Much like Kirk Gibson's home run, you could live in Minnesota, right? And you know Kirk Gibson's like you know it, right? L.A. Kirk Gibson. Magic Johnson, L.A., championship. How about the lob that Kobe threw Shaq, and Shaq, boom, throws it down, and the place goes, it's an iconic NBA moment. It's an iconic L.A. moment. Did Aaron Donald just join that list? Was that the moment? Was that the moment where you said, oh, ooh, not only do we have a Super Bowl championship for the first time in Los Angeles since the Raiders won one way back in the early 80s, but you've got the visual to go along with it. Obviously, there's Cooper Cup catching the fade. That's the 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 sports part of it. But the image that you might remember is Aaron Donald holding his finger up and 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 pointing to his ring finger like I just got it. Give it to me. Title, ring, however you want to call it. That was the moment where like there you go. And then another player in another sport, much like I'm, I don't want to throw any shade at it, but if if Jalen Brown had done it for the Celtics. Like, okay, that's cool. I like it. Jalen Brown's a good player, classic team in the Celtics, but it's Jalen Brown. He's not, it's not Larry Bird or, or, you know, Kevin McHale or something. Steph Curry taking Aaron Donald's move. I think that's incredibly awesome. I think that that's a great deal of respect. I think it's kind of goes to show you that Aaron Donald is one of those guys that other athletes look at a little differently. There's kind of this respect that goes among all of those guys that maybe you're Mookie Betts and you run into Steph Curry. There's this, Oh yeah, I, I get it. I always go back to this where Mike Trout went to shoot some, some, some baskets with uh, the Warriors when they went to play the A's a million years ago and Trout's out there knocking down shots with Curry and, and Clay Thompson, and you could tell there's like this mutual respect between like, yeah, no, I, I don't do what you do, but I get what you do. And I think that's what Steph was doing with AD, certainly a moment to, to win a championship the way that he did, but just a, a really cool moment from one mega, mega, mega star to another mega, mega, mega star. And I think it just kind of validates the Rams and Aaron Donald and their position in the sports universe this was not a team that just kind of popped up and grabbed one and then ran away and hid it, they're they're here in the right city with the right stadium with the right players that other great players and other great sports are gonna like yep i'm with you on that i'm with you on that all right that's gonna do it for this episode of locked on rams make sure you click that subscribe button make sure you click it both in your podcast feed and your locked on rams youtube page we got you going tomorrow, and I'm going to get to that. I know I mentioned it earlier, but we'll get back to it tomorrow on tomorrow's Locked on Rams pod. But how do you get better by going against the very best every single day in practice? That is on tomorrow's Locked on Rams. Until then, whose house? It's Locked on Rams' house.